is Ready Employee One, the channel looking at what video games can teach us about the future of learning and work. On this show, each episode we pick a game and dig into one of its core mechanics. We'll explore why that mechanic works so well and consider how it could be applied to learning. Today we're taking a look at one of the oldest game mechanics out there, and not just in video games. Today we're looking at dice. You might be thinking, I know how dice work. You roll them, and the little gremlins inside pick a number by tossing a coin down a well. Doesn't everyone know this? Well, though that may be true, today we're looking at two cool ways to use dice that you can easily embed into your next learning solution. To do that, we'll be breaking down and comparing how dice are used in Other Waters' Citizen Sleeper and ZAUM's Disco Elysium. The great thing about dice is that you'll be hard pushed to find a learner that doesn't know or recognize them. So embedding these two new mechanics into your learning couldn't be easier. You and the lieutenant lean all your weight into pushing the doors apart, but you're not quite synchronizing your efforts. Both of today's games are narrative-led, choice-driven role-playing games. Citizen Sleeper sees you role-playing in the ruins of interplanetary capitalism, living the life of an escaped worker washed up on a lawless station at the edge of an interstellar society. Disco Elysium sees you take the role of an unstable detective with a unique skill system and a grisly murder to solve. Both games are heavily inspired by the flexibility and freedom typically seen in tabletop RPGs. For more on role-playing games, check out my video on Disco Elysium and its skill system. Within those tabletop RPGs, dice rolls determine whether an action taken by the player is successful or not. The number of dice a player can roll in an effort to land a winning number is often linked to how leveled up a player is with a particular skill. For example, if the player needs to roll a 6 on a 6-sided dice to be successful in their skill check, for a lower level skill they might only get one dice, and only have a 16% chance of rolling that 6. But a higher level skill could see them provided multiple dice, making their odds of rolling a 6 higher. The higher your proficiency, the more chance of success. In both of the games we're looking at today, dice mechanics are core to the gameplay. In Citizen Sleeper, you awake each day with a number of pre-rolled dice that can be applied to a myriad of potential actions you want your character to attempt. In Disco Elysium, certain actions require skill checks, and aside from a handful of instances, rather than resulting in hard success or failure, these skill checks open up new story avenues to the player. So what is it about these two mechanics that make them worth talking about? These games provide us with two great ways to embed choice and uncertainty into learning. Within Citizen Sleeper, depending on your status and health, you have up to six dice to use each day. What you do with them is up to you. What the game smartly does is provide potential uses even for the lowest rolls. Throughout the space station you explore, there are numerous repeatable and one-off actions. Some require a specific dice number. Others have a chance of success or failure, depending on the dice you use. A three can give you an even chance of a negative, neutral, or successful outcome. A six could provide you with 100% success. It's up to you as the player to determine where you'll use your finite dice resources. To add another wrinkle, players can use dice in a way that gives them a better chance of more dice to use the next day. Use the dice now and have fewer tomorrow or put some to the side. It's all up to you. Disco Elysium's dice mechanics are similar to Citizen Sleepers, but rather than seeing what dice you have to work with, you see your likelihood in passing skill checks. Fail a dice roll? Well, now a new path opens up to the player. Couldn't take out the heavy with your fists? Well, now you'll have to defeat him with your intellect. Couldn't get the racist truck driver to open up to you? Better go interview other suspects. Even highly leveled up skills can fail. And rather than have players quit, reload, and try again, ZAUM provides dynamic storytelling driven by the outcomes of these dice rolls. Failure doesn't mean failure at all. So where and how could we use these mechanics in learning? Here are a couple of ways you could use each of these mechanics to get your creative juices flowing. The man groans once again, but his tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible to make out the syllables. You're teaching someone how to best manage the finite resources you have on offer. This could be equipment, supplies, or people. You want to observe and understand a learner's choices. You want the learner to have a place to try out multiple strategies. Here, Citizen Sleeper's pre-rolled dice come in. Provide your learner with a number of dice-specific options for where resources are required. Then provide them with pre-rolled dice and see where they choose to deploy them. Perhaps multiple dice work for a specific need, but one version yields better results. Maybe they can invest certain dice for future dice, resulting in fewer today. 
create an observable playground and see where and why they make their choices based on the finite pre-rolled dice they've been given. You want to train people to adapt in the moment in a sales situation. Look no further than the dice mechanic in Disco Elysium. Have your learner choose the skills they think they excel at and the ones they struggle with. Based on their responses, provide them with more or fewer dice. Then apply those skills to a sales scenario. Have the learner identify the skills they will be using during the pitch. That could be storytelling or empathy. It could be technical know-how or dot connecting. When they want to use those skills, have them roll their dice and see whether they roll any sixes. If they do, they pass the skill check and move on. If they don't, then they'll have to try a different approach. It might feel too random, but sales situations often take on a life of their own. This way, your learner can explore multiple approaches for what feels like unlikely situations. At the end, they'll have a wealth of strategies they can employ for situations that before they might have felt too fantastical. Dice have been around forever. There are reports of cube-shaped dice going back to 2000 BC, so they're a game mechanic that has stood the test of time. We sometimes overlook such simple mechanics in favour of the new and exciting. But the inherent randomness of dice, and their simplicity in conveying meaning to a learner, means that they are a great tool to use. So if you're faced with a design challenge that requires your learners to consider choice, randomness and uncertainty, maybe have them break out a handful of six-sided dice. That's everything for this episode. Let me know in the comments, what's your favourite dice game and why? See you next time, and don't forget to like and subscribe.